Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of Hot Takes by FTTV. We are discussing all the hot takes today. My name is Javad, joined with my co-host Ali. Ali, what's the hot take that you want to start us off with today? Well, I've got a lot of hot takes, but the best one I can come up with right now is uh, Ronaldo. Uh, people are saying that uh, the project Ronaldo at Juventus has failed miserably. So what is your take on that? I absolutely agree. I think this is the hot take. Ronaldo at the top level is done. The project that Juventus would try to create around Ronaldo is done. No longer are we going to see Ronaldo with Juventus at the top. I feel like they might end up even selling him. And Ronaldo at Juventus is pretty much over. I feel like they wasted a lot of money. Though they made a lot of money back with shirt sale through sponsorships and through commercial revenue. I feel like the main aim was to win Champions League. The thing that they have been missing and desperately in need of for quite some time. They brought in Ronaldo to do that, but they weren't able to. And I feel like the project Ronaldo at Juventus is over. Do you agree? Uh, absolutely not. Um, when you bring in a player of Ronaldo's caliber and pedigree at the European and league front, you are bound to bring in a team as well, which has players who can support that uh, main superstar. Juventus did not do that. On top of that, awful managerial choices. First of all, they had Allegri, who was extremely defensive and did not center his gameplay around Ronaldo, and which was an awful thing to do. And he had players like Matuidi uh, in the middle of the park, who were way past it, their prime. And uh, then they got Sari, one of the most inconsistent managers in the world of football. Uh, good long-term coach, but Juventus needed uh, results on the go with the aging squad that they have. So uh, for that thing, I cannot blame Ronaldo. And look at his record, man. Uh, 112 goal contributions in 121 appearances. Now, which person in Juventus' history has done that before him? And uh, oh, Juventus' pedigree on the European front hasn't been amazing. They haven't won the Champions League in more than 25 years. So uh, when you bring in Ronaldo, you bring in players as well, a supporting cast which can uh, do the basics right. And Juventus lag that. <laughs> no, I, I agree. I somewhat agree with you. But here's the thing. When you bring in Ronaldo, when you're spending that amount of money, you want to change your history. You're absolutely right. Juventus does not have any European pedigree with the likes to compete with Bayern Munich, with Barcelona, with Real Madrid, with AC Milan. They're nowhere near that. But I think when you got Ronaldo, you got a chance. And you have... He, he's made an impact, no denying that. The guy's got tons of goals and I feel like he might end up being the Capo Capineri of Serie A this season. So he might end up being one of the only players, one of the few only players to have scored or been the top scorer in most of the top flights that he's played in. You have a point there, but I feel like they brought in Ronaldo to win the Champions League. And when he's not winning the Champions League, the project is failing. It's not that Ronaldo is a failure, but Project Ronaldo, which was supposed to be Juventus's big return on the European stage, winning the Champions League, I think that's where the failure is. And I feel like Ronaldo is to blame on this side as well. So here, here's another hot take. I feel like Neymar is not going to win Ballon d'Or during his career. Agree or disagree? Uh, well, I do want to disagree because I don't like Neymar. I don't like the antics that he uses. I think he is one of the examples of the player who had a lot of talent and still has a lot of talent and is a game changer. But he has let fame and power go to his head and not in a good way. So uh, that's the uh, take that I have on Neymar. And uh, on the specific point of the Ballon d'Or, if he wins any, I think with Pochettino at uh, the driving wheel at PSG, I think he can win a Ballon d'Or, no doubt about it. If Lewandowski is out of the picture, who do you have who can, um, you know, contend for the Ballon d'Or? I think Mbappe or Neymar. And Neymar being the center point at PSG can achieve a Ballon d'Or in the two or three years that he has at the top of football right now. So I think he can, he can win a Ballon d'Or. What do you think? I, I absolutely disagree. Uh, and here's my point. I've got a video coming out specifically looking into the in-depth history of one of the football greats. So be on the lookout for that. But in there, I discuss how Brazilian football is dominated 
by either of two things. Uh, you're either one of the good guys like Pelé or you're either one of the playboys like Adriano. The guy had walls and bags of talents and he ended up just throwing that away, partying all the time. And I feel like that's the route that Neymar is headed for. The guy was supposed to be the next best thing in the world of football apart from Ronaldo and Messi. And he was for quite some time. And But I think the life in Paris really got to him. All the partying, all the hanging out with the supermodels, I think that got to him. And I certainly disagree with you in this point that he's going to win a Ballon d'Or. I think other players have gone past him. I think the Mbappes of the world, the Haalands of the world have a better shot of winning Ballon d'Or compared to Neymar. And I think as long as Ronaldo Messi are still out there and of course, who can forget the greatest right now, <laughs> Lewandowski, as long as he's playing, I, I don't think Neymar is going to get the sniff of the uh, all hailed Ballon d'Or. I, I think it's it's done and dusted. He had his time to shine and I think he's well past that. And though he'll still be at the top, but he's not going to be the player like he wasn't able to be the top player even at Barcelona playing alongside with Messi. So I, I think that my, my hot take is I don't see Neymar winning Ballon d'Or throughout his career. It is going to be a shame, but I think it's a rightful thing because he's been passed on by so many other good players. So the next hot take that I have for you is that uh, Lionel Messi, the GOAT in football, will stay at Barcelona. Do you see that happening? <laughs> right, so a lot of the videos we have discussed specifically what's going to happen with the whole Messi debacle at Barcelona. And uh, I, I see a point you're trying to make with Messi, should he be staying, with the new president in place, with the new formation, with Bartomeu out and Koeman really doing a good job bringing relevance back to the Bologarana. I feel like Messi might have a shot but I still don't see it happening. I think the cracks were too big to fill in and I think the romantic route of teaming up with Pep and winning the Champions League again with him, I feel like that's too much of a route for him to take and it's he, he's not going to deny that and I feel like he already had made up his mind but he was just he, he couldn't get out of the contract. He, he didn't want to leave the fans behind as this. But I think now that the contract is going to run out, I don't see Messi continuing with Barcelona. I feel like he is still going to leave. Uh, do you think he's going to stay? Now, do I want it to happen? Absolutely not. I would love Messi to go to the Premier League and you know make his name there. And I want to, I just want to see Messi in a league where intensity is at an all-time high. And I want that uh, Pep Guardiola reunion to happen. Thirdly, Barcelona are in a hole and at least two to three years of well thought of thought, thought out planning and uh, structured thinking along with good transfer activities required to pull out Barcelona from this financial and uh, uh, the depth they have right now. And they, uh, they need to reconstruct on a lot of different fronts at the club. So I think I don't want Messi to waste his uh, two more years of his uh, peak in football in that process. So I don't want that to happen. I, I feel like he is going to go, but there's a point to be made. There's a, definitely a case with that picture of him holding his son and voting for the next president at Barcelona. It really shows the love affair that he has got with Barcelona. And he is definitely one of the greatest of all time. And there's very few greatest of all time who have stayed at one club throughout the history of world football. I can only count a few off the top of my head, Maldini being one of those. And I feel Messi, if he stays in my head, in my heart, he's got all the respect in the world from me, staying at one club and really showing your loyalty, which is not in the world of football anymore. No one's loyal, no one's there. But Messi, if he stays, uh, I would I would respect his decision. Now, picking off where we left off in our podcast, here's my hot take. And I want to know a little bit of an in-depth detail of why you think Mo Salah should be told at Liverpool. Well, it has to do with uh, the need of the hour right now. Uh, Liverpool needs someone uh, who is a little different to Salah. Because if you look at the attacking system of Liverpool, the front three work in conjunction. If Firmino is not supplying the balls up front to Mane and Salah, they usually don't perform. And this is statistically proven in football that Liverpool has played over the course of the last two to three years. So right now, Firmino is not performing at all. Mane is a player who can perform in a number of different systems. Salah, not so much. So if they sell Salah, they can make top buck 
uh, on top of that they can bring in players like uh, daniel podens or uh, uh, neto from wolves uh, i i would like to see him at madrid i think sala deserves that with the specific way of football he has played uh, with the absolute brilliance in form that he has when he joins a club i think he has a life cycle at a certain club each club he's played for he started off really hard and then he slowed down and uh, only bar a few exception where he started off very slowly in italy but i think when he goes to madrid he's going to take a uh, place of hazard and hazard who has been slowly but surely trying to get back to where he was i don't see him getting back to there and i think madrid is need of another galacticos right now they're lacking star power in their team the only star power that they've got is ramos and is benzema and apart from them i don't think there is much of that you've got the casemiros of the world and you've got the vinicius rodrigo uh, rodrigo for that matter right you got a ton of players but none of the galacticos of old there there isn't any beckham around there isn't any ronaldo around there isn't any kaka around so you don't have those names that uh, you would be expecting to hear of when you see a team sheet of real madrid salah would definitely help them out and i think it's really time for him to leave uh, liverpool liverpool should be investing in it, in the youth one more time okay well uh, that that was our hot takes for today and i'm really glad that you joined us for yet another episode uh if you agree leave a comment down below if you disagree let us know why you disagree and why you think we were wrong leave a comment give it a thumbs up and make sure to subscribe to our channel for more footballing videos to come in the future every tv out